Hello and welcome to this film which is uh, really I suppose it's a summary of the year 11 acids and bases topic. We're just going to look at a few example questions that you might see in tests or exams and um, I suppose if you feel confident with these questions then you've probably understood most of what we've been talking about in the topic. Okay? If some of them are difficult then maybe you ought to just review some of the films that you found a bit more difficult. Anyway, here we go. Here's the first one. Uh, we're comparing, in this question, we're comparing um, two solutions, both with the same concentration. Okay, so they're both 0.1 mole per litre. So they're both as concentrated, or you could say they're both as dilute as one another. That's one of the early things we talked about. But um, we're comparing their pHs. And we are also comparing different acids and we should know that this one is strong and this one is weak. Okay, We're being asked to explain why that pH difference is there. Okay, we can't have anything to do with the concentration. Okay, um, This acid is strong so we know that it ionizes completely whereas this one is weak so it doesn't. So in other words this sounds pretty good. Okay, This first one sounds pretty good. H3PO4 can release more hydrogen ions. Well, yes, it can. It's a polyprotic acid. It's got three H pluses, whereas nitric acid has only got one. But you'd expect, if that was an explanation for something, it would be explaining why the pH of this would be lower, right? Because a higher pH means you've got a lower H plus ion concentration. Okay? So, really, in spite of the fact that H3PO4 has got more, H plus ions than nitric acid. Nitric acid still has the lower pH because it's strong and because phosphoric acid is weak. So that one is true, but it's not an explanation of this fact. Okay? Nitric acid is a weaker acid than H3PO4. Anyone putting that one down has got things completely the wrong way around there. And H3PO4 can act as an acid or a base. Well, no, the H2PO4 minus ion can act as an acid or a base, but H3PO4 can't. Okay, so um, there we are. The answer to that one was A. Next question is comparing uh, two different solutions of the same acid, right, with pHs of 2 and 4. And it's asking by what factor, by what factor does the concentration of H plus ions differ? in these two solutions. Right, well, we ought to be able to remember that the concentration of H plus is related to the pH. And in fact, if I've got a pH of 2, that means that my concentration of H plus is 0.01 moles per litre. Okay? So if I've got a concentration of, uh, sorry, a pH of 2, that's my H plus ion concentration. If I've got a, con a pH of 4, I've got 4 decimal places after my, sorry, four numbers after my decimal point. Okay, so 0 0.0001 moles per litre. Okay, that's a nice simple way of doing it in year 11. Okay, the pH tells us how many numbers there are after the decimal point, and they're always going to end in a 1, okay, because we're only going to have to do it for whole number values of pH. Okay, so by what factor do these two differ? By 100. Okay, not that one is double the other. Okay, this one is a hundred times smaller than that one, even though its pH is higher. Okay, so pH higher, concentration of H plus lower, two numbers different, that's 10 times 10. So if it was three numbers different, 10 times 10 times 10. Okay, next question Which of the following statements about solutions of ethanoic acid is false? Okay, ethanoic acid is a weak acid. It's useful, although you don't have to do it. It's useful if when you're answering these sort of questions, you've got in mind what the hydrolysis equation looks like. Okay? We'll see in another question this is really quite important. But if you can write the hydrolysis equation for this substance, and if you can remember that this acid will give H+, plus to water. Okay, it will turn into its conjugate base and water will turn into its own conjugate acid. 
and that there's a double arrow here, meaning that not very much of this is going to turn into these things, then you can decide that, well, if I've got a 0.01 mole per litre solution of this, my concentration of this will be much less than the concentration of the acid. Okay? Much less than that. So if the pH of 2, pH of 2 is when you've got a concentration of H plus of exactly this. Okay? If we've got a pH, if we've got a concentration of H plus that is less than that, then the pH is going to be greater than 2. Okay, so that one's wrong. They contain a fairly small amount of hydrogen ions. Remember, this is the hydrogen ion, okay? There's not going to be very many of them because ethanoic acid is weak. So that sounds pretty good, okay? The most concentrated species in the solutions is likely to be water. Well, think about it. Most times when you dissolve something in water, the water's in the massive majority, okay? There's much, much more water than the thing you're dissolving usually. Okay, and if we're saying that hardly any of these things turn into them, then the water's going to be not only more concentrated than this, which is what you're dissolving in the water, but it's going to be a hell of a lot more concentrated than them as well, because hardly any of these form. So that sounds pretty good too. And they react with carbonates to produce carbon dioxide and water. Well, all acids react with carbonates to produce carbon dioxide and water. So that's pretty good too. All right. So just A there is the false one. And as I say, you don't have to write hydrolysis equation there, but perhaps if you're thinking of it, it can make things a bit clearer for you. These equations are so important, particularly in year 12, where a lot of the explaining that you do is based on these equations. Okay, We're just going to move on to a particular question that deals with that kind of thing. This could equally well be phrased Explain why the hydrogen carbonate ion can be termed amphoteric, okay, or amphiprotic. They wouldn't have to write this right equations to show, okay. But if you're asked to explain, then it's good to write these equations, okay. So the hydrogen carbonate ion, first of all, HCO3 minus. Why can it be termed amphoteric? Well, we need to understand what that means. That means it reacts with acids and bases. So Let's react it with an acid, okay? And let's react it with a base. Now, notice here, these are Arrhenius acids and bases, okay? H plus, our acid, OH minus our base, okay? What's going to happen if, this, if these two react together? Well, H plus is going to be given to the HCO3 minus ion, and we're going to form h 2 CO3. This is our base, it's acting as a base when it reacts with the acid, and it's forming the conjugate acid of this base. Okay? You could equally well write that as HCO3 minus plus H3O plus, and then we can see that there's two conjugate pairs. You'd still make H2CO3, and your H plus would still be given to that, and you'd be left with water. Okay? Similarly here, we've got HCO3 minus reacting with OH minus. This time the proton or the H plus ion is being given from this to that. So this is HCO3 minus acting as an acid when it reacts with a base. Okay, Amphoteric means it reacts with acid or with base. So we're writing equations to show it doing that. Okay, What's it going to form? Well, H plus lost from here is going to give us one less H and one more negative charge. Okay, and the other substance formed is going to be that plus H plus, which is H2O. Okay, so there's writing some hydrolysis equations essentially. Okay, we're writing equations to explain why it can be amphoteric. So if we're explaining something like that, then show the thing reacting as an acid and a base. In other words, giving and taking H plus ions. That's the key point. Okay. All these equations that you write, there's got to be an H plus ion transfer. Okay, well, that's it for those questions. Um, really, they just illustrate the most important points. Okay, if you can answer them, it doesn't mean you've answered every type of question there ever was. Okay, have a practice at some other questions, certainly from the resources that get posted. And um, let me know if you're having any difficulties because this is a topic that you can 
aim to succeed in it. There's not a lot of very complicated things in it.